Say jump. 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 Say 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 jump. Jump. All right, I got it in your spirit now. Lord, I thank you for another day above ground, above ground and out of prison. Lord, I thank you for uh, allowing that tooth to fall out of my mouth and not me having me swallow it. <laughs> Lord, be with my voice, even though it may sound weird. I know that you will take over at this time and think through my mind and speak through my vocal cords. Lord, that all that you want done tonight through the unbelievable 12 steps you have afforded us to learn and walk in, give me the words on how to teach it from the text that I learned it from. And Lord, do whatever you're going to do. Lord, I ask for forgiveness of all the things that are in me that are not of you. I receive the forgiveness that I may be a purified vessel to teach your world changers how to live life differently, to go after and jump after everything you created for them to walk in. Lord, give us the peace and the understanding to hear this word. In your name we pray, amen. Let's give God a hand. So how many of you have been in treatment? Raise your hands. So that's a lot of us. So in treatment, which I've been in 11 of them, um, they, they typically encourage us to utilize some tools that they have afforded us to learn from. And God is so smart that he inspired individuals to write these texts in such a way that we can receive them because a lot of us, when we start here, we're blaming God for stuff. And we have to understand that God gives us all free will. So at the end of the day, whatever you did or whatever was done to you was not God. It was somebody's free will. So at the end of the day, we want to utilize these texts to understand. And if God for you tonight is good orderly direction or group of drunks, as long as God isn't you. But if you stay in these rooms long enough, you will understand this is a spiritual program. And God is all over the 12 steps. So how I learned the 12 steps was in the 12 and 12 with AA. And, and, and basically, this book, which it talks about the steps as well, which is, is Alcoholics Anonymous, basically the big book, where there's a lot of different stories. So if you do not have one of these books, and you, I, I didn't plan on doing this, God just told me to do it. If you do not have one of these books, and you need one of these books, after the teaching tonight, we're going to have Mike Livingston up here. And he's going to get your name next week. We will buy you a book and we'll have it waiting for you. If N.A. is your thing. If N.A. is your thing. These are the basic texts. The basic text of N.A. And it works how and why. These are books that I've read front to back. I know them in my spirit. They're all biblical pr pr proof and truth on, on what the Bible really is. But again, it's in a way that we can digest it. If N.A. is your thing, this is what I've learned from and different things of that nature. If you would desire an N.A. basic text or it works how and why, we would also like to give you one of those next week. Please see Mike Livingston after the group. Let's give God a hand. Now, I'm going to take it a step further. If you need a Bible, where all four of those books came from, and you're in need of a Bible, I will take it a step further, and we will purchase a study Bible for you. So you can, you can basically, so when I read, I typically read out of the NLV, or the NLT, or the NIV. Um, the King James is awesome, but it's a little over my head. Um, this, is, this is probably, I've learned a long time ago, if your Bible's a mess, your life isn't. But if your Bible goes, ee, -ee, -ee when you open it, pretty much your, your life isn't going to be squeaky clean. If your Bible squeaks, your life isn't squeaky clean. And if your big book is collecting dust on it, let me tell you something, that dust is going to cover you and it's going to turn into a different form of dust. So we have to understand that these are tools that God has afforded us to have. Say Mike. Mike. Stand up, Mike. See Mike. Say see Mike. I don't know how we're going to buy them, but I know enough faithful people that will stand with me and help this happen. But when we, if we buy it for you and you don't read it, praise God for you. You can't turn these. Pawn shops will not accept Bibles. Now, Dylan's mom mentioned Hazelden. I've been there. It's an awesome program. 
there is a place by there, a bar that it, it really it troubled me that they would take the tokens for a first drink. That's, that, that, that troubles me. Because at the end of the day, we need to stop it. Say stop it. Stop. So I want to go through the 12 steps with you tonight. And I got it given me something else to end it with. Um, and, and, and I wanted to give you the, the text that I learned it from and I go to often as I'm mentoring and, and read myself and how I've been mentored. Um, and, and, and I wanted to do it in a way, and, and, and we print out those sheets not so you can throw them away. We print out those sheets so you can write on them. So I don't know quite what the Holy Spirit's going to do here tonight with the 12 steps, but I do believe the Holy Spirit's going to pose some questions for you to answer. And I do believe that you, some of these questions um, that need to be answered will help you understand the meaning of why the 12 steps exist and different things of that nature. So step one is we admitted that we were powerless. I, mean, I put the word dependencies and our lives had become unmanageable. Now, it's important for you to understand why the word we is in there versus the word I. Because typically you need help from somebody else for you to really admit you're powerless. So the first question or the first note I want you to write on your sheet is, who has God used in your we for you to admit? Or maybe you haven't even admitted yet you're powerless. Maybe you just are here because you have a problem. Admitting you got a problem is different than admitting that you're powerless. Admitting that you're powerless means that every time you pick that thing up, it is destruction. No matter how you try to skin that cat, you buy less than you I'm only going to buy this or I'm only going to drink that. And you always go more and further than you want. So I want you to really take the sheet home and think about the pro parole officers and probation officers and your children, your parents, the police, your banker, your employer, your ex-wife, your ex-husband, all the people that God used that were part of the we that helped you admit and I don't want you to resent the we, because without the we, you probably wouldn't admit it. So the we is profound in a way as I reflect back on my life. I mean, I never agreed with the we. I might have said I had a problem, but it was the we that helped me admit. So how would you know that a person has admitted they were powerless? Just because you're here doesn't mean you've admitted that. Just because you go to A A N A C M A S A G A Day Day A B A A B A whatever E B A whatever it is you go to doesn't mean you admitted it. A A teaches us that the first step is the only one you got to get close to, if not perfect. Because if you can't admit this, you will drink, use, gamble, and do sexual things again. If you can't admit that every time they teach us in the rooms of AA, I'm allergic to alcohol, every time I drink, I break out in handcuffs. <laughs> so at the end of the day, you have to admit it, but we can help you do that. And again, do not resent the people that have helped you with the we. And, and really, it'd, be, it'd do a good service because you'll probably have to circle back with them in step nine and thank you for helping me admit it. But when you're in the courtroom and they're trying to get you to admit you are powerless, you're upset. And you resent that, that we, so we admitted, so how do you know a person that has admitted this? I'll get to that in a minute. That we were powerless. That this thing has got more power than me. That whenever I drink, snort, shoot, whatever it is, even think about it, it, it has got some power and this thing's got so much cunning, baffling, and powerful, they call it. And it, it's, it makes me powerless. And, 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 and being powerless means being vulnerable. Being powerless means that, that I don't like this. This thing is making me do things that I never said I would do. It's making me act out in ways I never said I would act out. In, in a sense, I'm resenting what, uh, uh, what I ever resented I became. So, and my, lives had my life had become unmanageable. Now... You, you know, uh, there's nothing more uh, challenging than trying to manage your life while you're high. <laughs> trying to manage your day-to-day -day while you're high is very difficult. That's why I said your addiction costs you something and your recovery is going to cost you something. But, but here's the thing. I'm, I'm going to spin it now. 
I'm going to spin it to biblical text that God returns evil and he makes it good. Could it be that you would have never understood the power of God without being powerless first? Could it be that you would never have gone to God for manageability unless you would have been unmanageable first? So maybe you're powerless and your unmanageability is a blessing in disguise. So, so how do you know a person that admitted it? Well, then we go to step two. We came to believe that a power, so now you're seeing a power being introduced to your powerlessness. So if you just, just like I said, if you came to this meeting and we're all trying to do this for the first time in our lives, that would be very tough. It's tough to begin with because it's going to cost you something. But if you just, hey, I'm a drug addict and I got a problem and I'm powerless and my life's extremely, but if that was all you read, you'd be, you know what? But that's the farthest a lot of us ever get. I'm powerless and my life's a mess. And that's all we recognize and admit. So the second step says, came to believe that a power greater than myself could restore me to sanity. And then I want to break that down real quick for you. Because we came to believe. We came to. You have to come to a conclusion. We will help you with that conclusion. You are not going to be able to conclude that on your own because you won't believe anything unless there's evidence to believe. And there's plenty of evidence to believe in this room. You hear it said in the 12 steps rooms, step step, step two is a three-step process. We came. First, you got to show up. Then you come to the you detox and all that stuff. And then we come to believe. Well, how do you come to believe? You see God working in somebody else's life. I mean, some of you will may have an audible conversation with God. I don't know if it was him or not. But typically God uses people and he uses his word, which is him. And, and, and you come to believe and you get to a point in life. I know too much about him to doubt him. That this isn't a conspiracy theory, that we're not here with some hocus pocus stuff and we're not trying something that may work. This works if you work it. So you come to believe that a power, now, 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 that should be a no brainer. I'm powerless, but I can't believe in a power greater than myself. So what is your alternative? To believe in yourself who's powerless? You got your butt whipped, you know, I was 120 pounds soaking wet. Lost my family, lost my integrity, lost my dignity, lost my money, lost my house, lost my freedom, lost my health almost, lost my mind. But, but yet, yet, I, I'm not so sure about this power if it ain't me. Because when I believe in a power other than myself, I have to give up control. That's right. Now, why is it so hard for a person to give up control that's life was out of control? But it is. So a power, where did I find the power? I found the power in the people. Because God works through people. Greater than myself, who's powerless, to restore me to sanity. Now, there's so much talent in this room. So all you have to really do is get the plug in the jug and you'll be a good employee again. You'll start looking better again. You'll start eating normally and drinking and, you know, probably sleeping a little more and you're going to look better. But it's, it's one thing to look better. It's another thing to feel better. So, so, so a lot of us miss it. And even if we do get to step two, um, we think the sanity thing is how we were living. Well, yes, that was insane that I was selling dope and selling everything else and robbing and stealing and living on the streets. Yes, that's insane. But that's not the insanity that this step is talking about. The sanity that needs to be restored that this step is talking about is in between your two ears. Because if you can deal with that at a thought level, you can in turn. So, 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 I mean, how it is that that I came to believe is like, man, there's a guy like Steve Skoranek in my group and he'd been sober. How many years? 17 years. And, you know, I see his family being restored. I see his, he's still living. I see he's he's a pretty good guy. I see all these things. and, And it's like, all of a sudden I'm like, man, this could work if I work it. So, so we have to come to this conclusion that it could work if, if I work it. Now, you're never going to turn your, self, your life over to something that you don't believe in. And, and now it goes on to say, if you look, it says made a decision to turn our will. Well, what's your will? That's your internal being. 
Your will is your internal being and your life is your external being basically over to the care of God as you understand him. So a lot of us never even make it to step three because we're not so sure we believe in God. And at the end of the day, I have to always check the, the statement of a mindset. Like if you had no problem turning your life over to the care of methamphetamines, why are you having such a problem? You control freak turning it over to God. Because you weren't controlling meth. You weren't controlling heroin. You're not going to control God. And God ain't going to control you. Why is it so hard to turn something over to something that controls you being drugs But God gives you free will and he don't want to control you. He wants you to go to him so he can be in control. Check this out. Are you really not even a control freak if you turned your life over to methamphetamines that made you controlled by it? Is it possibly that you're really full of fear? So so it says now that that we, um, we basically... You know, we, 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 I don't know about this God thing. And so, so how do you know if somebody admitted they were powerless? Well, they come to a conclusion, conclusion that they're not the power. And this power that they're not so sure what it is can restore them to sanity. And they, they go on to say now in step three that they make a decision. That's how you know if a person admitted they were powerless. You can say you've admitted it, but you've got to show that you admitted yeah. it. So, 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 so what, the, the, another thing that gets stuck on, on step three is, is, is more or less this, this thing is that I don't understand God. I mean, I don't understand why God would allow this in the United States. I don't want all this stuff in the world. I'm, why that happened to my friend? Why this? That, that ain't God. God gives us free will. God, God does, God's, you gotta give your control to God. In a sense, we've turned our lives over. So now I love what AA teaches us now in the third step prayer. God, I offer myself to thee. To build with me and do with me uh, as thou wilt. God, whatever you want me to do, I'll do. Now, think about that for a second. You turned your control over to alcohol, and alcohol could do whatever it wanted to do in and through you that alcohol wanted to do in and through you. You turned yourself over to the care and will of alcohol, I mean, I mean, without even knowing it. And think about what that drug made you do. And it says that, uh, relieve me of the bondage of self. So what does that really mean in the third step prayer? That, that God removed me from the equation. God is me that gets in the way. It isn't them or they or that or this or that or what. It's, it's me. It's me that gets in the way. God removed me from the equation. Uh, uh, remove me from all these different things. So the third step prayer says this, that I may better do thy will. Take away my difficulties. Anything more or less that can stop me from serving you, that victory over them may bear witness to those who are help in thy power, thy love, and thy way of life. May I do thy will always. See, that means you don't do the will of God when you feel like doing the will of God. You do the will of God. So how do you know what the will of God is? You get involved with the we. You get involved. Now, let me, let me go back to step one and two here. The we of step one will be different than the we of step two. Because most likely the judge isn't going to be in an AA meeting with you. Some will, but the, the, not a lot of them. So the we's change over time. The we that helped you admit got, us to the, got you to the we that's in this room. And the we that's in this room will get you to the God in the third step. And it's the God in the third step that will help you with the, the, the step, every step going on. Now check out what happens now. Now it's step four. So, so, so God... I don't know how to look at myself. Step four says made a made means that you can't fake this. If you've been working on your fourth step for four months, you ain't working on your fourth step. That's right. It shouldn't take that long because it won't be the first or the last four step you do. You have to understand if you got a good sponsor that, that made means I got to construct something. So I faked it. I faked the fact that I admitted I was powerless. I faked that I believe in God. I even went so far to fake that I turned my will and my life over to the care of God as I understood him. But boy, oh boy, when that pen and paper comes out, you can't fake that. 
So we made means we need to construct something uh, searching. Now, why is it that you would search every nook and cranny for more meth, but you won't search yourself to get rid of yourself? Did I drop it? Did I drop it? Searching. Searching. And fearless. You got to be fearless because these are the very things that you have ran from your entire life. You have not allowed yourself to go there, whatever there looked like or whatever there felt like. And God is saying this, you can't do this on your own. You're going to need mine and their help. You're going to have to be searching and fearless, man. You're going to have to look at that thing. That thing that keeps you up at night, that person that you can't get out of your mind, that out of your heart, that, that very thing. Uh, fearless, moral image. That's hard because we haven't been very morally sound. We don't want anybody to know what we really think or feel or do. And the fourth step is another indicator if you really admitted you were powerless and your life had become unmanageable because there's nothing more painful than getting sober and not working the steps and getting a little more manageability in your life just to lose it again. And now the fourth step he was fearless and more immature. And, 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 and it's like, man, man, I've been, I've been blaming everyone, but, and I have not looked myself in the mirror. See, see, something might have been done to me, but it was wrong of me to hold on to it this long. And the fourth step is always looking at yourself. And now the fifth step says, admit it to God, yourself, and another human being. So at the end of the day, it's all inside. It's all inside of you. All this stuff that manifests itself outside of you has to first be in you in order to come out of you. And you admit it to God. I say this all the time. Well, God already knows. He's God. But you will strengthen your relationship with God to admit it to God because that shows that you trust God. I mean, I use my kids as an example. And I've been blessed with three good kids, but let's say Pastor Scott was one of my kids. Well, let's just call him Pastor Scott. And I know Pastor Scott did something, and I know he did, but he doesn't think I did, or he even knows it. But it's not until there'll be communion in this relation until he admits what he did to me. That's right. And there's communion in relationship now, and there's covenant, and, 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 and also there's something to be said about, you know you did it. You've been running from it. But there's something powerful when you admit it to yourself, along with admitting it to God and another human being. The exact, it says. That means there's no cookie cutter. There's no minimizing or fantasizing. It is what it is, and this is what happened. So what does the fourth step talk about? Fears and resentments. Those are the two big ones. If you go out of NA, it'll talk about assets and liabilities. The big book kind of gets in there with the T-chart and different things of that nature. But at the end of the day, I mean, it's assets and liabilities. Everybody's an asset and everybody's a liability. But they really hone in on these fears and resentments. And now you're talking about these fears and resentments. And more or less, you're doing it with yourself, God, and another human being. You're talking about what's been talking to you. Have you ever talked about what's been talking to you? Are you the only person that's going to rationalize all these things? So we learned that, and now we get to step six, where it talks about we became entirely ready to have God remove these defects of character. That's a preparation step. Now, what are the majority of your defects of character? Are The majority of them are a manifestation of your fears and resentments. Because if you're plagued with fear and resentment, you're, it's going to affect your character. But you, you just identified the majority of your character defects in 4 and 5, and mainly 4 by confessing in 5. James 5.16 says, confess your faults to one another that you may be healed. Then your prayers will be powerful and effective. And now you're, you're orchestrating this new spiritual life. And, and, and now you're like, man, I don't want to be this person anymore. And I want you to really recognize that the only step that really deals with addiction is step 1. And the other 11 steps have to deal with the why behind the what. And, and now these defects, I don't want to be walking around afraid, masquerading in pride. Yeah, yeah. 
and ego. I don't want want to pretend like I'm a know-it-all when I don't know nothing. But I'll never admit I know nothing. So now it says in step seven, humbly ask God to remove our shortcomings. So what are the shortcomings? I mean, how is it that we know? I mean, I've been coming up short my whole life, mainly because of fear and resentment. I've turned my life and my will over to the care of God as I understood him. I've proven that to myself, mainly, self-respect through a fourth and a fifth. Now I've examined my life up until this point. And not that I remembered everything, but I've examined my life up until this point. And I'm like, I don't like what I see or feel. God, please help me change and transform into another person. So I have to use some humility. Like, God, I tried, I stopped, tried to stop lying for years, and I still lie. I tried to stop being offended for years, and I'm still offended. God, I, 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 I tried to stop taking shortcuts, but I still take them. God, I stopped flying out. I wanted to stop flying out the handle and be so angry and be this victim, but I'm still a victim. And God is saying, hey, give me the very things that keep, me, keep you from serving me. I'll take them so you can be the best version of yourself to represent me into another human being's life. Now check out what the seventh step prayer says here. My creator, I am now willing. The seventh step means a different level of willingness that you should have all of me. So by now you're like, man, even the stuff I'm holding on to in my thought life and my behaviors, they're not doing me any good. God, you need to take all of me. And if you have a good sponsor, you should do this step, uh, this prayer on your knees. You should have all of me, good and bad. That God wants to take the good and make it better. And God will recycle the bad and make it profound. Do you have to understand that God takes evil and he turns it into good? That God works all things together for good? I pray that you now remove from me every single defect of character which stands in the way of my usefulness to you and my fellows. Grant me the strength as I go out from here to do your bidding. So you have to understand, God's looking at your motives. God knows you better than you know you because God created you. And if God knows that if he removes these defects of character and shortcomings and you're not going to use it to benefit him and somebody else, most likely he's not going to remove them. And if you want to go home and play house and not come back and serve a community like this, you're probably going to be angry in the house you're playing. And at the end of the day, this is what God is saying. So it's about what now step eight says this. See, see, you have to understand that steps four through seven have to deal with the inside of you. Steps eight and nine deal with the outside of you, but you will never effectively walk in the outside of you without first looking at the inside of you. Steps four through seven dealt with fears, resentments, communion with another man, God, woman, whatever your sponsor may be, asking God to remove your defects of character and your shortcomings. Now God is saying this, make, made a list, another construction, you've done it in step four, of all person we had harmed. That word we stood out to me because somebody taught you how to harm people. You didn't learn how to judge people all on your own. You heard it at the dinner table growing up. I am really nervous for the the, the generation where, man, the very thing I said never would be I became because what you resent you become. I'll never be like that, what I saw growing up. So all the persons we had harmed, now you got to take responsibility because you did it and become willing. You're seeing the importance of willingness to make amends with them all. I had somebody that's not an addict uh, text me yesterday. It was struggling with a life situation. She was assuming something, and when you assume something, you start filling in the blanks of whatever you're assuming without even knowing what's really happening. That's a shortcoming, and that's a defect of character where you're going to fill in the blanks of something you really don't know knowledge of. So now step nine says, made direct amends to such people wherever possible, except when to do so would injure them or others. We don't want to cause more injury. That's why you go through your eight step list with a sponsor and you figure out the priority of who to make amends to. Amends is not, I'm sorry. Amends is like, hey, I screwed up. What do you need from me? Amends is cleaning your side of the street, but you don't want to do more harm than harm has already done. And direct means that you got to have a conversation. You got to have a direct conversation. You have to own it so you can disown it. 
And now after the, the, the ninth step, or the, the ninth step promises we learn in AA. If you are painstaking about this phase of our development, I mean, it's going to be painful. You're going to have to walk through pain. It's going to cost you some. Um, we will be amazed before we are halfway through. Now, I don't even know if I'm halfway through yet, but I'm simply amazed. You are going to know a new freedom and a new happiness. What that means is what I thought freedom was and what I thought happiness was, wasn't it. You will, you will not wish to shut the door, more or less, on the past. I mean, you, you will have no regrets, and we have to understand what the promises really mean. The promises are internal. We will comprehend the word serenity and we will know peace. No matter how far down the scale we have gone, we'll see how our experience can benefit others. That feeling of uselessness and self-pity will disappear. We will lose interest in selfish things and gain interest in our fellows. Self-seeking, which should have been dealt with in the third and seventh step prayer, will slip away. Our whole attitude and outlook upon life will change. Fear of people and economic insecurity will leave us. We will intuitively, intuitively know how to handle situations that used to baffle us. I mean, God will start doing something in your life if you do this. We will suddenly realize that God is doing for us that we could not do for ourselves. Are these extravagant promises? We think not. They are being fulfilled among us, sometimes quickly, sometimes slowly. They always materialize if we work for them. Now, step 10, if you do step 10, you won't have a long ace step list going forward. I'll say that again. If you do step 10, you won't have a long eighth and ninth to do in the future. Continue to take personal inventory. That means you're knowing yourself. You got to get to know yourself so you can see yourself coming. And when wrong, not if wrong, promptly admit it. See, when you're starting this journey, you're promptly will be a day or a week. You want it to be a couple seconds. Because what you'll realize is that God removed your shortcomings. God removed your defects of character. God is working on your fears and your resentments. You have knowledge now when these things come into your feelings life that they don't feel good. They used to be everything you only, only knew. And God is saying now, you just said something. You just did something. Something was just done to you that you're holding on to. You won't let go and let me deal with it. you got to be promptly in this because you can't afford anything to pollute you. Self-pity, anger, offense, um, unforgiveness, um, low self-worth, all those things that pollute. You're wrong to think like a victim when you can have victory in Jesus. You're wrong to stay offended. You're wrong to stay offended. You're wrong to, to, to hold a grudge, gossip. That's dead wrong. And if you ever want anyone to forgive you, you better forgive them. I mean, we're offended when all we did is offend people. Now, step 11 says sought through prayer and meditation to improve. And none of us, a lot of us never even get to this step because we get what we think we need and we leave. Sought. I want to seek God, man. I know so much about you. You cleaned up my side of the street. You've taken shortcomings from me, which is a process. Character defects, I, I examine them, target them. You removed a lot of them. I'm still working on some of them. One thing you have to understand about character defects, you kind of like to sleep with them. Don't take that literal like some of you are. I am so accustomed to feeling this way, I can't imagine myself yeah. without feeling this yeah, way. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm so accustomed to self-pity, I can't imagine my life without self-pity. Yeah, yeah. I'm so accustomed to blaming you the way I feel. I will never give somebody so much power other than God for you to say something that wrecks my day. So, so praying, by now you're like, man, God, you know better than me. I don't need to pray for a new car or a new girlfriend or a more money or anything, our new boyfriend or whatever you pray for or whatever. God, you know better than I. I've been doing this with you for a while. I'm praying only for the knowledge of your will. Yeah, yeah. Because last time I prayed for a car, it wasn't you gave it to me. I went and manipulated the situation and I got a DWI. <laughs> so all I want to know from you, God, is your will for me. But I can't carry your will, out, your will out without the power. Now that power I learned about in step two that I came to believe that could restore me to sanity, I certainly have been restored to sanity if I'm praying only for the knowledge of your will. <laughs> step 12 says this, having had a spiritual awakening. <laughs> you better know what that really is. <laughs> it's not a moment of clarity. 
having had a spiritual awakening as a result of the previous 11 steps. If you haven't done the steps in the way they're designed to be done, you haven't had a spiritual awakening. And if you don't eventually get a spiritual awakening, you ain't going to make it. As a result of these steps, we tried to carry the message. You can carry the message, you can't carry the addict. The best program you can work is a good one, the program. You can be an example. You are not their God. Don't let them make you your, their God because if they make you their God, they're going to get twisted and offended by you. Don't let them put you on a pedestal. Just let, let yourself carry that message. The message I carry is a message of freedom and it ain't my message, it's God's message. And to practice these principles in all my affairs, you ain't going to be able to do that unless you have a spiritual awakening. You're not going to be able to practice these principles in all your affairs if you got resentments, fears, character defects, shortcomings, unforgiveness, all this different stuff. You're going to be Tommy here and Timmy over there and Ted over there and every, wherever you go, you'll be a different person because you're whatever anybody else wants them to be, wants you to be. But if you're always what other people want you to be, they're never going to know who's showing up in front of them. And if they don't know who's showing up in front of them and you don't know who's showing up in front of them, what is that going to look like? I want to be a guy that what you see, what you get. And the reason why I wanted to play that jump video is this. A lot of you are, all of you are gifted. Say, I'm gifted. gifted. You're great people, all of you. Say, all of us. us. But at the end of the day, if you don't jump, a lot of you, a lot like me, I went through 11 treatments, and it's not until the last couple times I started working the steps. The 12 steps are your road and key to freedom. And at the end of the day last week, it got a little crazy up in here when we talked about jumping. I want to tell you now, you, you're, uh, last week I talked to you about Peter. Peter was a guy that Jesus gave the keys to the kingdom to. Jesus has given you the keys to your life many times and you get, keep getting in a wreck. So Jesus gave Peter king, keys to the kingdom that he would build his church and the, the Haiti will not, hell will not overcome it. And then Jesus, Jesus had to say to Peter short time after, get behind me, Satan, because Peter didn't know who Peter was. And then Peter denied Jesus three different times. So with the text on your sheet, this is after it happened, he was crucified. Jesus is gone. And, and Peter wanted to go back to something that didn't work. If you don't work the 12 steps, you're always going to go back to the very thing that didn't work for you. So Peter is going back to what didn't work, where Jesus found him to begin with. He went back and he went fishing. And, and, and he was with the other disciples because a lot of us, if not all of us, are leaders. We lead people in the wrong thing to do. And here's, I'll go back to the first step. We admitted we were powerless. You know what? Your family's powerless over your addiction. They can't control you. They wish they could grab power. And just like... It's like his mom said, man, Dylan's mom. She was powerless over her son's addiction. You're part of the we. Your kids are part of the we that are powerless over your choices. So Jesus is walking by and, you know, I, 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 tonight I believe he's here and he's walking through this place and he's looking at all of us that aren't working steps. He's looking at all of us, and we, we think it's no big deal. We'll, we'll do it eventually, or maybe we don't need to do it at all. My sobriety is all I need, and I don't need to work the steps. And Jesus is walking by on the shore, and John sees him, and he says, that's Jesus. And, and, and Peter possibly thought everything was wrecked. He thought, you know, I, I screwed up so many times. Jesus will never work for me. But here Jesus is appearing back in Peter's life. And, 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 and I taught you this last week because I believe each and every one of you have jumped. I believe when you quit doing dope or alcohol or gambling or pornography, you jumped. But like I told you last week, the problem is you jumped and you came back to the very place you jumped from. See, Peter did not jump in the boat. He jumped out of the boat. See, 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 here's what God just kept wrecking me after last Tuesday. So I got to bring it back before we close here. See, 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 you get sober. And you jump out of your addiction. And you end at the very place that you jump from. Come up here for a second. And this is another thing that happens to us without even knowing that it happened to us. 
we, we, we're in our addiction and, and we want to jump out of our addiction and we jump up and we're up for a little bit. And we're not back down yet. I'm, I can't touch my addiction. I'm hovering over my addiction. But what happens is this. A little pink cloud of recovery here. This is so awesome. <laughs> I love being sober. Oh my God, I like it so much. I'm learning so much. I'm being held up by the group and not by God. And what happens is I fall back right where I came from. See, see the problem is if you just jump a little bit, you can always jump back. But if you're really serious about the 12 steps, you're just serious. I'm not going to jump up and down anymore and end up back in the same place and worse and go to another treatment and jump up with the pink cloud of recovery and jump up again and oh I'm gonna I, I didn't jump a little bit towards crack I was an Olympian for crack cocaine I got a gold medal as a long jumper here's what God shows me some of you are weak jumpers and just because you're out of it and you're not hovering over it you jump back but here's the thing if you get serious about your recovery and you jump, check this out, check this out. No matter what I try to do, no matter what I try to do, there ain't no way I'm jumping back there while I'm looking forward. The only way I can jump back to my addiction is look backwards and jump back. But if I jump like this, I can't jump that far back. Say I'm a jumper. Remove the chairs from this place. Put them on the side of it. Remove all the chairs and stand up. Play me some background music. Put all the chairs. I want people up here on stage with me. Don't leave before your blessing. This ain't over yet. You leave, you'll jump right back in the very place. Rows of people, get up here. I'm gonna teach you how to jump. Get it standing here when these chairs are gone. Now, if you jump into the person in front of you, that's on you. Leave some room. Give me better music than this. Give me that Garcia song. I want lines of people. Get in lines, get in lines. You can do it just like when we're in prison. <laughs> get in it, guys, over. I need BSM over here more. Turn that music up. You got that Garcia song yet? You got high heels on, take them off. <laughs> Tell me when you get that song. Brothers and sisters. All right. Under the sound of my voice. Jump up and jump right in the very place. Jump up and jump in the very place. I want you to recognize when you do that, you go nowhere. But when you jump into your recovery, rock this tune. 
I need you to jump the farthest you've ever jumped in your life. Now, if you're a big jumper, come up here on stage if you're a long jumper with me. If you want to jump far, come up here with me. Anybody, anybody can jump far. So, at the count of three, I want you to jump as far as you possibly can away from your past, and you will never return there again. One. 